Well, good morning, family. Good morning. Welcome to First Baptist Church of Inalakin. We're so glad to have family with us. And we're so glad that you're here. I know we've made through that uh, hump of uh, sickness that we've had the last couple of weeks, right? So we're all good, strong, glad to be here. Praise God. So I have a special speaker this morning. Uh, speaker. Frank is going to come and uh, give us Psalms 57 this morning. So if you have your section of scriptures, I'll ask that you turn there. And let's hear from God about his worship this morning, okay? Well, I've been here a long time, and I've never been introduced as a special speaker. <laughs> That's good, I guess. Uh, but uh, I'm glad to do this. Uh, so if you take a moment, open to Psalm 57. You won't be disappointed. Follow along with me. This is, uh, I'm reading from the New American Standard, the only version that's approved, but sorry. <laughs> For me. Uh, you can read whatever version you like. Um, the, the chapter says, prayer for rescue from persecutors. And uh, boy, that's apropos today. If you're not feeling some persecution, you're not paying attention. Perhaps we're not doing enough. Well, we aren't doing enough, but anyway. I'm not here to preach. Okay, Psalm 57. Be gracious to me, O God, be gracious to me, for my soul takes refuge in thee, and in the shadow of thy wings I will take refuge. Until destruction passes by, I will cry to God most high, to God who accomplishes all things for me. He will send from heaven and save me, he reproaches him who tramples upon me, Selah. God will send forth his loving kindness and his truth. My soul is among lions. I must lie among those who breathe forth fire. You feel that sometimes? You been there? Yeah. Even the sons of men whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongue a sharp sword, be exalted above the heavens, O God. Let thy glory be above all the earth. They have prepared a net for my steps. My soul is bowed down. They dug a pit for me, before me. They themselves have fallen into the midst of it. Praise God, huh? Cool how he does that. Have you seen that happen in your life? My heart is steadfast, O oh God. My heart is steadfast. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises. Awake, my glory. Awake, harp and lyre. I will awaken the dawn. I will give thanks to thee, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing praises to thee among the nations. For thy loving kindness is great to the heavens, and thy truth to the clouds. Be exalted above the heavens, O God. Let thy glory be above all the earth. May the Lord add the blessing to the reading of his word. Thank you. Thanks, Frank. Let's stand and we'll sing our first song, okay? Well, where are you at this morning? Come on down. The price is right. No, that's the wrong. Come on down. Come on down. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. 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 Morning, Faith. How are you today? Good. All right. Anybody else? That's it? That's it? All right. Good. So, <clears throat> Frog Club. You all feeling loud and rambunctious this morning? Or are you still sleepy? You lost an hour of sleep today. Can you imagine? The horror of it all. <laughs> Who would take an hour away from sleep from us? It's terrible. So let's wake the audience up, shall we? What's Frog Club stand for? Holy Word of God. Thank you. How's the sticker collecting going? You guys got a bunch yet? Yeah? What do you think you're up to? Four? Five? Four? Five or six? All right, so remember, we're collecting stickers because we want to show our faithfulness to the Frog Club, which sounds like what? Right. 
That's kind of what frogs do, right? They spit on things. Maybe not. I don't know. But it's fun to think about anyway. So anyway, in our time together, we have been talking about spiritual gifts, right? We've kind of been going through one by one. We want to continue that conversation this morning with you guys. I, f- I forgot my Bible. I-, I was wondering if someone could lend me their Bible. Does one of you have your own personal Bible at church? And if so, I got a package of Rolos for the first person who gives me a Bible. What, what? Oh, Peter. Is that two weeks in a row? Wow. The, Le- the Lebansky family is really... Uh, Really turning it up. All right, good job, sir. Glad that you brought your Bible. Hey, this is a nice Bible. It's, ooh, it's even a New American Standard Bible. I'm not going there. Use whatever Bible. <laughs> we're just we're just having fun. All right, for those of us who are passionate about a different Bible. All right, all right, this is fun. All right, so I want to talk to you guys about a individual who is very important in the nation of Israel. And we find this individual in 1 Kings chapter 3. Now, who do you think I'm going to be talking about, kids, that that are in 1 Kings chapter 3? Can you think of anybody that would belong? Look at this bookmark is almost right in 1. Did you do that on purpose? That's amazing. 1 Kings chapter 3. Who do you think is uh, the topic of conversation? Who, who would be... Elijah? Not Elijah. That's a good guess, though. With a name like 1 Kings, what do you think of? You might be thinking of Kings, right? Solomon. King Solomon. Right? There's Saul, and then there's Solomon. How many, uh, how many kings were before King Solomon? Do you know? Lydia? Who was kind of like the first king of Israel? Not Joshua, but he was a massive, important leader, judge over Israel. That's a a really great guess. That's a really great guess. So we got Saul, right? Then we got David, and then we got Solomon, right? So what is Solomon's relationship to David? Who is Solomon's dad? Solomon's daddy. Yeah, all right. And who was Solomon's granddaddy? He's got a really cool name. <laughs> I love that name. You want to think of that name? One of the best names on the planet. Jesse, right. That's a great name. Trying to help you out here, guys. All right. Jesse's a, Jesse's a good name. I kind of like it. I kind of stuck with it, so I have, it is what it is. All right. So King Solomon was kind of a cool dude. Uh, he really started out well. He really did. He was really on fire for the Lord. He had an opportunity to do something great for the nation of Israel. And in this moment we're going to talk about how he kind of started his legacy, how he started out as a king. And I'm going to tie that into a spiritual gift. Okay. So chapter three, beginning verse one, it says, then Solomon formed a marriage alliance with Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Okay. That wasn't so good. And took Pharaoh's daughter and brought her to the city of David until he had finished building his own house in the house of the Lord and the wall around Jerusalem. The people were still sacrificing on the high places because there was no house built for the name of the Lord until those days. Now, Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of his father David, except he sacrificed and burns incense on the high places, again, because the temple wasn't built. The king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for uh, that was the great high place. Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings on the altar. In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night, and God said, ask what you wish, me to give to you. Could you imagine if God said to you in a dream, Peter, ask me anything you want and I'll give it to you. What would you wish for? You don't know. Lamborghini, Ferrari, what do you guys think? What would you want? What do you want more than anything else in the world? 
why not? You could ask for more wishes, right? That would be a great wish. Yeah, no, but here this guy is on the top of the uh, Israelite world, if you will, and a creator God comes to him and says, hey, you could ask me of anything you want, and I'm going to give it to you. All right? So here's Solomon's prayer, verse 6. And Solomon said, you have shown great loving kindness to your servant David, my father, according as he walked before you in truth and righteousness and uprightness of heart toward you. And you have reserved from him this great loving kindness that you have given him a son, which is me, to sit on the throne as it is this day. Now, O Lord, my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, yet I am but a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. Your servant is in the midst of your people, which you have chosen, a great people, which are too many to be numbered or counted. So give your servant an understanding heart to judge your people, to discern between good and evil, for who is able to judge this great people of yours? That's a pretty good request, right? Like, he understands the magnitude of his role as a king and leader of the people, and so he asks to be a kind of king that has an understanding heart. Now, we all want to be in that kind of a kingdom, don't we? Where the guy on top, the leader of the nation, uh, is, a, is a good man. He understands the difference between good and evil. He has an understanding heart about his people, and he can judge the people rightly. Uh, I don't need to go into 2023 with that. We'll just stay here in Scripture. All right, it's verse 10. It was pleasing in the sight of the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. God said to him, because you have asked this thing and have not asked for yourself long life, right? We could have asked for that. Give me a long life. Nor have asked for riches for yourself. So I know there wasn't Lamborghinis back then, but maybe it was like a thousand chariots or something like that. Thousand horsepower. Nor have you asked for the life of your enemies. You know, just kill the guy who's beating me up all the time but have asked for your dis- yourself discernment to understand justice. Behold, I have done according to your words. Behold, I have given you a wise and discerning heart. Remember that. So that there has been no one like you before you, nor shall one like you arise after you. I have also given you what you have not asked for, both riches and honor. Well, that's nice. So that there will not be any among the kings like you all your days. If you walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and commandments as your father David walked, then I will prolong your days. Now, here's the idea, right? Solomon was given wisdom. Uh, most people on the, in history, even uh, Queen Sheba of Egypt and all the rest of it, said that he was the wisest man who ever lived. And I would concur that that was probably the most accurate statement that we have of Solomon, that he was wise beyond wise. Now, how did... Solomon get his wisdom. That's the point. How did Solomon get his wisdom? Did he come by it by natural means? Did he just stumble upon wisdom and be like, oh, from my experiences, I have learned such and such. Is that how he got wisdom? No, right? He got wisdom by what? By God, right? By asking God for wisdom. Now, wisdom is a spiritual gift, as we're going to learn in the sermon hour today. Any chances you may think about how you may be able to have the spiritual gift of wisdom? Any, any ideas how you might go about getting something like that? How about we pray for it, right? How about we pray for wisdom? And God will be willing to give it to us. That's what he did for Solomon. Let me give you, as we close up Frog Club, uh, a section from the New Testament. It's found in the book of James. James chapter 1 is considered, if you will, uh, well, all of James is considered, if you will, the Proverbs of the New Testament. There's just a lot of like uh, good one-liners in there, some some really good stuff to live by. And, uh, man, this Bible's nice. I like this Bible. <clears throat> so, in the book of James, uh, verse 1 says, James, a bondservant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes who were dispersed abroad, greetings. Consider it all joy, my brother, when you encounter various trials. That's, that's not what we normally think, is it? In King Solomon, as a king, he is going to be encountering various trials 
his entire career. Because it's not as if he's just going to be king for a day. He's going to be a king for a very long time. He's going to have trial upon trial to go through. Verse 3, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its perfect result, so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Verse 5, but if any of you lacks, lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives it all to all generously and without reproach, and it will be given to him. All right? So sometimes, as I said last week, us as believers, we're kind of like, gee whiz, you know, I, I want to believe in spiritual gifts. I don't know exactly what that means about the Holy Spirit coming and living inside of me and empowering me to do things. Do I have the gift of evangelism, which we talked about last week? Do I have the gift of mercy, which we talked about last week, both of which I think that you guys have a portion of? This is another gift that's kind of cool in the sense that you can have this spiritual gift specifically if you ask for it, if you pray for it. It's God's desire, according to James, to just dispense it. And not just dispense it like, okay, I'll, I'll give you a buck if you ask me nicely. No, it's like, I'll give you a thousand bucks. I'll give you a million bucks. How much wisdom do you want? I'll just pour it on you, right? That's the kind of God that we serve. And we need to think about our spiritual gift that way of wisdom, that if you lack discernment, if you don't know what to do, you should pray for it. And God will be generous to give you that spirit of wisdom, which we all need in life. Make sense? All right. So I have another sticker for you to add to your collection. One of these days I'm going to have to ask you to bring your collection in so that we can see it, so I know how many of you are up to date. All right, because we've got to collect 15 out of 17, right? Plus the bonus one. So we should have a good collection going. And I do need two volunteers for the offering. Who would like to volunteer this morning? Faith, thank you. And Lydia. All right, ladies, thank you very much. Come up here and grab your sticker first. And then grab an offering plate. I'll pray for it. And then I'll ask uh, Elder Jeremy to come up. And he'll do the announcements, okay? All right, club, let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for today. We thank you for your written word. We thank you for the testimonies that are included in your word. Lord, we thank you that if any of us lack wisdom, uh, that we can ask for it and that you'll give it to us generously. We thank you for that, Lord, because... We need it. Lord, we thank you for uh, the jobs that we have, the ability to give a portion of that away. Lord, we pray that you'd both bless this gift and bless the people this morning who give it. Pray for all these things in Christ's name. Amen. All right, guys, take your seats.